Uh, hi, this is your update for BOAD 356790 uh, Consumer Behavior, uh, the online version of it. Uh, this is for today is October 14th, 2013. Um, what I'm going to do today is uh, just kind of go through a, a question and try to answer a question I have posed to me that I think is going to help a bunch of the groups working on the projects. And that is, how do I come up with an idea of who the target market is for my product? Who is the current target market? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple quick ways to do this and give you a little bit of a refresher real quick on uh, how you do search. First, whenever you're doing a search, remember the idea of a research funnel. I'm going to do this funnel type thing here. And what I'm going to depict is that basically we're going to go from the general down to more specific. Now this is particularly an issue when students are dealing with things like uh, Google or the library search engine, etc. There are a whole bunch of things out there, uh, ser uh, computerized uh, search engines, uh, even an old-fashioned card catalog search that can create problems. If you start up by saying, let's say my brand is the, um, oh gosh, uh, let's say if, if I was attempting to find the uh, target market for a uh, Seagate uh, solid state drive, you know, 160 gig solid state drive. So I go to the uh, internet, Google, and I type in target market Seagate 160 gig SSD drive. And guess what? I'd probably get nothing or stuff that I really couldn't understand. If, however, I was to step back and ask myself, what is it I'm looking at? I'm looking at either target market for Seagate or a target market for a hard drive. I know those of you who have iPhones and iPads and that sort of thing, the, these terms are, are quickly becoming irrelevant. But let's say, again, that, that you know this is what we're dealing with. So what I would do is I would start with Seagate, then I might go to hard drive, then I might go to SSD, hard drive and somewhere in there I'd probably come up with a you know result or if I start with hard drive and then I go to hard drive markets then I go to you know SSD hard disk drive I'm going to use the abbreviation now so I'm not writing as much then I might go to like Seagate Uh, SSD HDD and somewhere along the way I would find things okay so let's say if I do this and I I'm not quite getting enough you know any anything that's gonna really help me first of all if it's a publicly traded company what I can do is I can go to their form 10k or 10q now I don't know if these are accessible these days This is going to be the forms 10K or 10Q, and this is if they are publicly traded. If they're publicly traded, you'll find these. Okay, and what these are um, are forms that are going to have to address some of the limitations of financial, of earnings, and other type of financial statements. So if I have a financial statement, I say, gosh, we made 5% on uh, our investors' money this year. We expect 10% this year. Okay, that's the initial part. Well, further down in that, I have to give an example of the things. I have to, I have to talk about things that may or may not affect uh, my earnings. And so, for example, let's say my, hard drive, my target market for these SSD hard drives were uh, military uh, installations. You know, uh, whatever. They need like a more rugged hard drive, something with less mechanical parts to fail. In the 10Q, you might very well find a statement saying that, and there may also be a statement saying that because of uncertainty in the defense budget, there is a chance that these shipments will be delayed, et cetera, et cetera. 
So one is you go to the company. Now, the thing about the company, again, the company is going to have all sorts of fabulous uh, things to say about their products. They're never going to say these products are losers. We don't know who we're selling to, et cetera, et cetera. No. What you have to do is you have to look, in, you know, kind of read deeper into what the company has. Another source of company-generated information on the, on the product is their advertising. Okay? So now we're going to talk about company advertising. And as we all know, these days advertising is on YouTube, advertising is on Google, advertising is in magazines, etc. And usually if you have advertising that's produced somewhere, it'll show up somewhere on the internet. Now once we have the advertising, we have to look at it. Because the advertising might explicitly state who the product is for. Uh, so for example, in the case of the SSD, it might say this is the perfect hard drive for people who are doing, uh, you know, mission critical um, port, uh, mobile computing or for people who are doing graphic intensive work or for computer gamers, whatever, they will say this in the advertisements because they want to grab your attention. Another thing that you can see in advertisements, take a good look at advertisements and if they have a picture of people around or using the product. Here's the key. Yeah. Whenever you see people depicted in an ad, Normally, the people are either going to be the target market, who the target market wants to be like, which I'll call referent, or aspirational, Or, in some cases, you can even see who the target market doesn't want to be like. Target market opposite. And that way, you can work back. Let me go through some examples of these. So again, let's say they have a picture, go back to that hard drive, and let's say they have a picture of, uh, you know, some 18-year-old sitting in front of a computer playing World of Warcraft or something like that. Well, then you know, okay, this is the target market. Or they could show someone who's like, you know, a world champion gamer, you know, who is like standing proudly in front of their computer that has a sticker on it that says Seagate SSD hard drives. Okay, again, here's this world champion gamer. You say, okay, boom, this is who, but, this, but who wants to be like that? You know, this is, by the way, is the, the case with many sports and other types of personalities. Um, again, it, it gives you a clue as to who the people are who the company is selling to. Another thing is who the target market doesn't want to be like. Now, um, <clears throat> the most common examples of this, believe it or not, are in ads aimed at kids. So what they'll do is they'll show a breakfast cereal that's so fabulous your parents don't want you to have it. Or uh, this, you know, music, this particular group is so wild, so out there, your parents don't want them, etc. Just kind of like, you know, tying into that kind of youthful rebellion thing. But it even applies to more, um, you know, perhaps sedate products. Years ago, and I've tried to find an example of it, AT&T, when they were facing competition from all these imported telephone manufacturers uh, for their commercial market, they had a series of ads called It's Cheaper, in which they would show the competitor, someone holding up the competitor's product. Now, again, this is several decades ago. This would not fly in the year 2013, I don't believe. But so, for example, they showed a woman, kind of a mannish looking woman in a man's business suit, not, not a feminine suit at all, holding up a phone and saying it's cheaper. They showed an African American holding up a phone saying it's cheaper. They showed an Oriental fellow, Asian fellow, holding up a sign, holding up a, another uh, competitor product saying it's cheaper, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? You get the picture. In other words, these are all people that the target market doesn't want to be like, so you could walk back and by extension say, okay, they're kind of aiming this at, at uh, older white males, okay? Um, so in any event, look in advertisements for keys. Another thing in advertisements, again, they can talk about where the product is sold. And different products are going to, you know, different channels of distribution are going to pick up different target markets. So, for example, if I'm selling a true luxury good, 
you may not expect to find a true luxury good, um, you know, in, in Walmart. I don't think I've seen uh, Pierre Cardin uh, watches in uh, Walmart, uh, Cartier watches or whatever jewelry in Walmart. You may expect to see it uh, in another store, either, you know, a store that's owned strictly by that manufacturer, Cartier, or perhaps some other uh, higher-end jeweler. So again, so retail channel and all this is going to be given in the advertising. Now, last but not least, we talked about advertising for the company that you're looking for. You can also get a lot by looking at the competitors. Everything we've said about the 10K, 10Q, everything we've said about advertising, it holds true for the competitors as well. So let's say you have a brand new company that's in the market and you're saying, gosh, who should their target market be? Use analogy. Go out there and say, okay, who are we selling against? What are they doing? Who are they going to? Okay. Unless the, the product is clearly aimed at a different market, then you could, you know, say, okay, I think I know who it's going for. Again, look for other cues as well that are going to tell you who the market might be aimed at. Things like styling, things like color, etc. These are dead giveaways many times because they are culturally bound and there are going to be certain uh, clues that are tied into them. So this is just, by the way, the beginning of how to figure out who your target market is. Um, we can get into this in greater detail next time if you still have a need to do so. Thanks.